episode, we're going to look at how we can interact with the Twilio API. However, the actual interaction to send out a SMS with Twilio is fairly simple. So in this episode, I want to focus more around how I would build my application to interact with the API. And I don't like putting a lot of interactions with third-party code throughout my application. Instead, I want to have a separate place where all of the third-party API interaction takes place. And then we just call a parent method from the outside within our application to then make the calls to Twilio. So the prerequisites for this episode, I do have a trial version and I've authenticated a phone number that I'll use to send the SMS message. I'll need my account ID. And then I also need the token, which you can just click the view link to see what the token is. And so the first thing that I'll do is I'll do a bundle in it. And this will create the gem file within my folder. And within the gem file, I'll add in the gem, the Twilio dash Ruby. And I'm also going to add in the dot env gem. And this will allow me to use environment variables within my application. And I'll just create a dot env file that I'll store my credentials. And so within my dot env, I'll have a Twilio account ID and then a Twilio auth token. And from here, I'll be able to access these as environment variables within the application. And don't forget to have a git ignore, and then you can add the .m file in here. So when you push this up to your code repository, you're not going to be sending up your environment variables. All right, so I created a main.rb file, and this will be the entry point for my application. The first thing I need to do is require the .env slash load, and this for a Ruby application or a Ruby script. So I don't have to then load in the environment variables. It's just going to happen automatically. And so to send an SMS message, we want to ask a person to enter a phone number that they want to send it to. And because I'm just using a trial account, I'll only be able to send it to a pre-registered phone number. So I can set a number equal to the gets.chomp. And the chomp will just clear any kind of white space or returns. And then we can ask for the message. So we can have an enter message. Then set our message equal to the gets.chomp. And so now we can actually send the message. So we're going to have a request. And this request, we needed to send it to some kind of service. And we're going to call it. And we're going to pass in the number and the message. So the actual sending, we're going to get our account ID. And we're going to set this to our environment variable. And it's going to be the Twilio account ID. We can then set our auth token. We're going to set this to the environment variable. And it's going to be the Twilio auth token. We can set our client. And the client is going to be the Twilio rest client. And we can create a new instance of this. And we can pass in the account ID. And we can also pass in the auth token. And now we can then use our client.api.account.messages and create. This is going to take in a few parameters. We have a from. And this is going to be the phone number line that we have set up within Twilio. We then need to say who it's going to. And this is going to be the number that we got from the user input. And then for the body, we're going to have our message. And for the phone number, I'm just going to set a global variable because this is the trial number that I got from Twilio. And because we're going to be using the Twilio client, we also need to require the Twilio at the top. And that's just going to be the Twilio dash Ruby. And so now within a terminal, we can run the main.rb file. And then I'm going to put in a fake phone number and then just a message. And then you see that we get an error. And essentially the error is that the two number is not a valid phone number. If I clear the screen and run the application again, I can put in a valid phone number with the test. And then you can see that we get a different error message. And the error message is that the trial account cannot send messages to unverified numbers. But then I'll enter in a valid phone number. And this phone number is a throwaway number that I had set up on Google Voice. And when we send this, we get the exit of the application. And now we have one new message. And then we can see the message down here, tests was sent from that phone number. And because it is a trial account, we get that little pre blurb. So the issue that I have with this approach is that we're not doing any kind of error handling, whether the user gave us some bad input, or if we're having trouble communicating with the REST API on Twilio's end. So what I like to do is to extract this bit of code into a service object. And that service object is then going to be able to make the call out to Twilio. And all the Twilio related code is now isolated into its own place. And so I created a new folder and I just named the folder services. And then I have the object.rb. And I covered this in a previous episode, so I'll just paste it in and kind of run through it. 
So we have a services object class. The entry point is going to be call passing in the parameters. And then we're going to create a new instance passing in the parameters. And then we're going to call our constructor method. The constructor method is going to make the call. So within our actual object, we'll have this method as the entry point for that interaction. And then it returns self. So because it's returning self, that's referring to the services object. So we're going to have access to things like success, failure, errors, and then we have the call method not implemented. So it's pretty basic. And then we can access the result by calling our object.result to see what the actual returned input is. And for the errors, we're setting a memoization of the services common errors.new. So within the services, I created a common folder and a errors.rb. And similar, I'll paste in the code that we used in a previous episode. And this is simply just allowing you to do a errors.add. So once this new instance is created, we can add in a key and then a value. And this is basically going to return a hash, which is going to allow us to store up all the errors that we're getting from this interaction. So now we can actually start creating the send sms.rb file, which is going to contain the code to send out the message. So this is going to be a module services, and we're going to have the class send sms. And this is going to inherit from the services object. Because we are inheriting from the services object, and this is not a Rails application, it's just some plain Ruby, I will need to require the relative file, and this is going to be the object or our services object that we created earlier. And so the first thing that I'll do is have a initialize method and the initialize, we're going to take in our recipient and then we're also going to take in our message. We'll create the instance variables of these and then we can have our call method. The call method is not going to take in any parameters because if you look back and remember, whenever we call our object.call, this is at a class method. It's going to create a new instance passing in the arguments and so that's why we have the initialized method and then we're calling the constructor, which is setting the result of our call and then passing back self, which is going to give us access to our error checks. And so the first thing that we would want to do before we go any further is to have some kind of guard clause. So we can do an errors.add and this is going to be a validation kind of error. And we'll say that this is when the missing recipient's phone number. And we're going to check this if the add recipient is empty. And then we're going to have a similar validation error where we're saying that we're missing the message to the recipient. And then we can send the message unless there's any errors. And so then we have our private method and then this private method will have our send message. And this is where we can make our call out to Twilio. However, the thing that I don't like about making the Twilio call right here is that this send SMS is not specific to Twilio. Because Twilio is a third party and there's no guarantee that they're going to be around tomorrow, or that something else better will come along, then I don't want to hard bake it into my code here, but instead I want the send SMS to be completely transparent to the end user. So all they have to give me is the recipient and the message, and then they'll be able to send the message, regardless of what the backend does. So I can take this logic and create an entirely new service object that's specific for sending to Twilio. So we can do something like a request is equal to the services, and then I'm going to create a folder called clients and then I'll create a Twilio and we'll call and we'll pass in the recipient and we'll also pass in the message. So basically we're going to be calling a service from within a service. So if this service call fails, maybe it was a bad phone number or something else that was sent out to Twilio, then this send SMS is still going to be okay and pass because we did not add any kind of errors. So down here we can do a errors.add multiple errors. And if we can set up our services client Twilio call to be just like this kind of service object, then we can simply just do the request.errors to get the result there. And we would only want to do that if the request was a failure. And again, this failure method, it's coming from the object where we have a check for the errors done any. And so I'll first start off by just pasting in the code from our main.rb and this is the code that we used to successfully send a message earlier. So we are going to have to require the twilio.rb because we're not going to want to have to require this within our main application and because the twilio.rb is specific to the interactions with Twilio, 
this is where I would want to require this gem. So we'll create our module for our services. And then we have another module for the clients. And then we have our class Twilio. And this is going to inherit from the services object. I'll move the phone number up to the top. We then need to create our initialize method. And this is again going to take in our recipient. And it's also going to take in the message. And similar to before, we set our instance variables. We then have to have our call method. We're going to have this method call the send message. And then we'll create our private method, the send message. And so now, whenever we send the message, it's going to set our environment variables. It's going to create a client out to Twilio. It's going to try to send the phone number. But because we are working within a module here in an object, I'm going to put in some before colons. So this is going to mean at the root level, we're going to call the Twilio. So it's not expecting it to follow the same name spacing. And then when we send out the message, I need to set these to instance variables and actually need to change it from number to recipient just to match what we had up here in our initializer. And so one problem that we may run into is if this client fails, as we saw before, it had some bad errors, then we may want to rescue from these. And when we rescue from them, this error is going to be the Twilio rest and then the rest error. We can get the error message. And instead of doing any kind of error handling here, I'll do an errors.add. And I want to keep this generic. So I'm just going to call this the SMS. And then I'll call it the error.message. And so now this Twilio RB file is only dealing with the Twilio interaction. If we go back to our send SMS, we're calling this object here. But if we are wanting to swap out for some other kind of SMS client, then all we would have to do is create another file similar to the twilio.rb. And then to make the switch on our application, we can just switch this call to the new service. And so going back and checking everything in our object.rb, we are calling the services common errors. So we do need to require that file at the top here. And so when we go into our SMS, we can see where we're requiring the object, but then we also need to require the twilio.rb. And then within the Twilio, we're only making the required to the Twilio Ruby. And so this should be good. So now back in the main RB file, we can require the relative file to our send SMS. And that's going to be under the services and then the send SMS. Our request now is just going to be to the services and then the send SMS. And so there's no mention of Twilio here. And I really like this approach because it's really extracted. If we ever need to change the SMS protocol, or what API we're using, we don't have to go in and mess with our actual application. Instead, we can first go check out the send SMS because that's going to be your first entry point that you know about from the request that you're making. And from within here, it's pretty clear that when you actually go to call and send the message, then that's when you're interacting with some kind of external API. But in this case, we're calling our Twilio service object. And from within here, if you needed to switch services, you can create your new one and then just reference it here. All the while, your main application has not changed a single bit, just your third party interaction service objects. All right, so now if we test this out again, I'll enter in my phone number and then I'll just create a test to message. And then you can see that it exits. And then checking our SMS messages, we get our test to message. And so we can put some checks in here. We can have a if request.success. We can then do a puts and then say the message sent successfully. We can do a different check. If the request was a failure, we can put our puts and then the request.errors. And so now if we run this, we'll put in a bad number with the message and then we get the error back that the SMS and then it's unable to create the record because the two number is not a valid phone number. If we try this again with a valid phone number with a message, you can see that the trial account cannot send to unverified phone numbers. Then if we put in a valid phone number and message, we get the message sent successfully. And over on our phone or Google Voice account, you can see that we got our message. So when I'm developing an interaction with the API, I really like this kind of approach where I take the function that I want to perform and then I encapsulate it as a service object as something like a send SMS. And then within that send SMS, I like to extract the actual call out to the third party API as its own object, just in case if I ever have to swap them out, then the development on the swap out can go ahead and begin. 
And so then whenever we're ready to flip the switch, all we have to do is change one line in our API call here. And because we have nested service objects, when you do something in request.success, this is checking the success of the SMS. But if we do the puts.result of the send SMS, then that's going to be returning the Twilio service object. And so we could then call something like a result on there to then get the Twilio API. But to do that, you're going to have to return the actual client down here. And we can test this out. And so the request.result, it's returning the services Twilio client. And if we do a request.result.result.class, we can see what this class will be. And it should be our Twilio REST API client. And there you have it. Well, that's all for this episode. Thanks for watching. For more videos, check out driftandruby.com.